Okay, so the next problem says on Earth, a ball is thrown straight downward with an initial speed of one meter per second from a height of 15 meters. And then what is the speed of 0.6 seconds after it's released? So as usual, we want to draw a good picture. So the initial height is uh, 15 meters. And the ball is thrown straight downward. And the initial speed is uh, 0.6, I'm sorry, the initial speed is one meter per second. But we're going to make that negative because it's downward and in our coordinate system we're going to have plus y being upward and plus x being to the right. So downward is negative. And so what's the speed of the ball? Uh, 0.6 seconds after it's released. So we don't exactly know where it was, so a t equals 0 0.6 seconds, uh, v final equals what? And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to change this a little bit again, so as to not to deprive the students an opportunity to work it on their own. So I'm going to make the initial velocity, I'm going to change that to 2 uh, meters per second rather than uh, 1 meters per second. Now this is an example of a physics problem that gives a little extraneous information that you don't really need. In other words, as long as it's high enough to hit the ground, it doesn't really matter how high it is because you're not asked for the speed when it hits the ground, you're only asked for the speed uh, 0.6 seconds later. So you only need to be high enough that it doesn't hit the ground, you could be 100 meters high, you could be 200 meters high. We're ignoring wind resistance, it doesn't matter how high you are. Okay, so in this case, uh, we had the kinematic equation a little while ago. V final equals V initial minus uh, one, I'm sorry, there's no a half out there, that's another kinematic equation. Uh, v final equals V initial minus GT. V initial is the negative two meters per second, so V final equals negative two meters per second minus 9.8 meters per second squared and now times the time as 0.6 seconds. So you plug in the numbers here and you'll have uh, the final velocity and if you notice that you could change what your initial velocity was and that would change your final velocity accordingly. Okay and once again we'll leave it as an exercise for the student to plug in the numbers uh, to keep us on a good pace here and we'll go ahead and have a look at the next one.